Hey guys, Derek Best, Beacon Fight for Life. Today I'm joined with Warren Mansell, who's the current professor of mental health at the Curtin University in WA, and he's been practicing psychology for 20 years. Welcome, Warren. Hi, thank you for asking me. No, you're welcome, thank you. Um, it's probably better off that you explain, tell me a little bit about who you are and, and what yeah. you're about. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'm from the UK, from a little town called Biggin Hill uh, in Kent. Yeah. Uh, and I've uh, been fascinated in science and nature since a kid, really. Okay. Uh, went to university, started with biology, but then got more interested in psychology. Yep. Um, so that was my path after that. Um, and got my doctorate uh, in clinical psychology and started researching this whole area, practicing as a clinical psychologist in the UK. Yep. Um, and I think I very soon realized that I wanted to take in the broader picture. I mm. wanted to lid, listen to people's lived experience of mental okay. health recovery. I wanted to listen to the different theories around mental health, right from the medical through the cognitive behavioral through to like humanistic mm -hmm. and psychodynamic. Um, and I wanted to take on board the fact that we're all human, we're all people. We have this interconnectedness, this intersectionality between our different um, vulnerabilities and our, and our personalities okay and given that we're all pretty unique so there's pretty much it's hard to try and kind of focus on one particular group and design something just for one type of person mm -hmm. so I've been looking for the kinds of ways of helping mental health and well-being that most people can just pick up and try and and use so universal approaches Let's let's look at that for a little bit. Let's strip it back. What's your interpretation on what is the, the what's the what is mental health? Yeah, so in my view, and I draw on a theory called perceptual control theory, mm -hmm. um, but it feels quite consistent with what people say that when people have good mental health, things are running as they want them to be so smoothly that they're not particularly noticing the kind of struggles and, and getting stuck for any length of time. Things are in a flow. Okay. Yeah, you've got your routine, you've yep. got your, your kind of, you can speak and talk and describe what's going on for you and things are running okay. Mm -hmm. When your men mental health is not good, you're stuck. There's things that you want in your life you're not getting. Um, and sometimes to the point that you kind of lose control over the things that actually either you took for granted or you really value your kind of, your relationships your feelings, mm. your behavior in some contexts is when people kind of get in a really panicky state mm. or in psychosis where you literally lose control of mm. your mental faculties. Yep. Um, and eating disorders where you lose control of eating or, mm. or so rigid in trying to maintain control of it, you lose control of other important things in your life. Yep. So for me and for people I work with, mental health is about being in control of what matters to you to the degree that you don't, you're not that troubled by it, bothered mm -hmm. by it, mm -hmm. and bad mental health or acute stress is having sort of short-term lack of control, mm -hmm. and chronic distress and mental health problems are about having this chronic loss of control of things that you really value in your life, and recovery is about reclaiming that. Just so we don't stress everyone out, you know, there's points, at, I guess, in everyone's life, I w would imagine, that they freak out for a little bit. Yeah. So, yeah. What what sort of time <coughs> period are we looking at that would say, okay, maybe I've got I need to look into this further. Well, that's an interesting thing because I think really what therapists do and what counsellors do just tap into what many of us do, can do naturally in our everyday lives, which mm. is talk through our problems, mm. kind of notice our feelings about things. If a memory pops into our head that think, hmm, what's my brain telling me there about this there must be something that must be connected mm. and that's what therapists help us do mm. and it's what we often do when we're talking or writing about a problem um, so the idea is that that is a mindset that we all have to some degree um, and it's almost like I don't know, yoga for the mind if you like mm. that you can just just keep that thing going I think it was Barack Obama who said before he became president, he was worried that he wouldn't get half an hour a day just to contemplate things by himself. Okay. So it feels like, because we're so busy, we need this space to just work through stuff, work mm. through priorities, work through conflicts, mm. 
whether the, some people use writing, talking to a friend, some people use counselling, but actually you people should find what works for them. Mm. I find reading uh, lately right? has yeah. been really helpful for me. Right. Just yeah. stop your yeah. mind, you know, for me personally anyway. Right. It's yeah. something I've introduced. But um yeah. Yeah. now AI, that's a the, the buzz word process or thing that's happening at the moment that you hear about AI everywhere you know AI and mental health is there a, is there a relationship there <laughs> yeah so there's a it's been, I guess a, quite a complicated relationship um, it's been quite surprising to most people how much mm. artificial intelligence has improved over the last literally the last 12 18 months and mm. it's, it improves all the time mm. um, one characteristic of that is that Bit, it's a bit like an advanced search engine. People seem to have to get what they want, either verbally or visually, mm. um, when they want it through just typing the text in and getting something back yeah. where they're tapping into this wealth of information. But now it's really kind of tailor-made and organized for them. Um, and I think getting information um, is can support mental health if people find the kind of information that's that we know does support that. And mm -hmm. often people, I've seen accounts of people finding about ways of seeing the human condition, ways about managing their moods um, through AI yeah. that they wouldn't have found about easily by asking someone they knew or maybe even using a search engine. Okay. So, there, so it does provide this, this huge potential for information. Mm -hmm. The other thing it provides, which is more of a double-edged sword is this potential for human interaction and mm. sort of virtual companionship, and you okay. see you see a real mixture there. Some people really gain from it for a period of time, but then some real challenges, which you actually get in real relationships as well, around sudden breakages of those relationships or mm. kind of people losing that um, that technology for some reason and suffering because of it, um, and and some real anxieties around what that that agent emulating a person is mm -hmm. actually doing and saying. Mm -hmm. um, and so what's interesting is we've approached AI, and this goes back 10, 10 12, 14 years now when we mm. started this, from a different angle. So AI, AI, AI was around then? AI, yeah, AI has been around since okay. you know, the 40s. <laughs> so Not really, yeah. yeah. So, you know, I guess you think about a chess, computer chess program is a piece of AI okay yeah you know um, but anyway um, in this last uh, yeah so we we sort of recognize that people can get information people might try and simulate a person with these systems but we're going to try something different mm -hmm. we're going to use AI to help just ask curious questions of a person about whatever they're bothered about as a therapist would Okay. But not with not trying to pretend that they are a person or that they are experiencing anything themselves because they're not because they're just a set of questions. Mm. But helping a person try out some questions that they've never maybe never asked themselves before. So, so cognitively. Cognitively and emotionally because okay. they might say, well, what, 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 are you, how are you feeling as you talk about this? Mm. Now, where is this in your body? Mm. Or it might say, how important is to, this to you? So I feel or, like a meditation or. I wouldn't say it's like meditation because that's more of a kind of a skills training. Mm. This is more like a counsellor or a therapist might do yep. at times when they're asking questions. Now often therapists do other things, mm. but Milo, our AI, is based on a therapy method of levels, mm. which is essentially just about asking curious questions, not because you really want to know the answer, but just because you know by asking different kinds of questions about a person's problem, mm. it's going to help them hold it in mind, process it, mm. see it from different perspectives and maybe come up with their own more um, adaptive way of dealing with it. So you said Milo, what, right. what's Milo? Well it actually stands for manage your life online. Okay. Uh, we just, it fits well with the you know, technology and it's a kind of a catchy name. Mm. Um, we are developing Milo now to a version that you can use offline. Okay. So it's kind of, I guess you could replace online with offline <laughs> um, but um, essentially it's just a text-to-text -text interface at the moment mm -hmm. people if they've got text-to-speech they could make those 
adaptations to their device, mm. but it just works through text to text, having a conversation with the agent, a bit like something like ChatGPT. Mm. But Milo's not going to tell you anything. It's not going to access any large no. language models. It's just going to ask you questions. It's just going to ask you questions. Yeah. So you can process it and sit in it and think about it. Yeah. 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 Help, yeah. help you through maybe. Yeah. Would yeah. it help you through a crisis or just through a difficult spot or who who would who would yeah. who would it best suit? Yeah. So if if someone is in a current crisis, then we think that requires some of the more um, it's kind of the mental agility and some of the safety plans that a someone on site or lifeline or maybe someone that you work with mm. might might be able to do for them. So I think that's at, at present something that we would want to. Um, signpost people to if you do mm. to a to a person directly, but even even once even if the person's recognises there there's a crisis which has been dealt with, or if there's not, they can use Milo to work through their dis what's behind their distress, mm -hmm. um, what they think might be behind the distress. They might not even be sure, but the idea of the questions is it helps them to kind of clarify that for themselves. Well, going back to what we said, just you know about mental health. Could it be a good platform for them to say, "Do I have a, a mental health issue?" Is is, is that um, just trying to practically it's think? It's not going to answer the question with a yes or a no. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to answer yeah. the question. It's just going to ask you questions. Yeah. So okay. the fascinating thing about it, even if so, we've used this therapy with people in inpatient wards, where they're talking about very unusual experiences, hallucinations, mm -hmm. unusual beliefs, that it some some. Uh, professionals in that environment might deal with it by giving them strategies to remove them or mm. trying to see if they fit a diagnostic criteria. Mm. What um, a therapist would do in that instance was, is help the person to describe them and explore them, talk about how they are managing them mm. and what they think is going on, um, why they might be there, mm -hmm. um, what's working for them, what's working against them in having these experiences. Yeah. And so Milo can do that without any of the, um, you know, can ask about those kind of internal experiences without um, trying to kind of take control of them essentially mm -hmm. um, by helping that person work through them and manage them for themselves. Can people... Not that we ha are using it in an inpatient context yet, yeah. but it's certainly there to deal with a, a spectrum of mm. different experiences that doesn't don't, doesn't really matter so much what the label is of it. So can people access it or is there somewhere to go for it? Or they, People can access it when uh, we're doing research on Milo mm -hmm. um, and uh, this year we're going to be um, getting a version up of Milo that people can use on their phones. It will collect some data mm -hmm. for research purposes um, so that we can really refine how it's used and know what its benefits and if any what the risks are. Mm -hmm. um, so this year we'll definitely be telling people about some research for Milo. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, it's not commercially available and it's not on App Store. It's not on App Store, yeah. yeah. Um, if, so, if someone wanted to get in, in touch with you or read about what you've been doing, yeah. is there somewhere yeah. they can go to do yeah, that? Yeah, quite a few places. I mean the central place is our website which is called ledbyexperience.org mm -hmm. um, because that's where our, our team page where it explains all the different things that we do and why yeah. we do them. Um, we also have a few social media accounts. So there's mm -hmm. one, there's a, a Twitter and a Facebook account for Milo. Mm -hmm. uh, Milo Social, I think, is the Twitter one. So at at Milo, at Milo Social. Uh, Milo yeah. M Y L O Social. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then we have some, you know, have other accounts for our research team, and I've got my own one. Um, mm -hmm. Plus, people can see some of my work at Curtin University. Yeah. Uh, my page as well. Okay. Yeah. So. My, at Milo, M Y L O social. Yes, it's And ledbyexperience.org, L E D by experience.org. Yeah. Um, some, they can go and check out your work. But just before yeah. we finish, you've also doing work around the four Ds. Okay. Can you yep. briefly explain that? Yeah, yeah. So um, everything I do is led by this, this same theory around control. Mm. And what I, you know, I've been in a quandary for a while around. Um, knowing that therapy is about helping people get that long-term control of their lives mm. that kind of lasts over long-term periods. But sometimes what well, that typically involves people going into some depth 
with their feelings, often with past memories, into kind of their values and mm. uh, I rules for life. So it's quite a, like in therapy, it's quite essentially a, a longer process. Mm -hmm. um, but it's also the case that people do things that give them some short-term control, can kind of take, can either distract them from some distress for a short while, mm. or can um, take the edge off an overwhelming state. Like when you're panicking to learn to control your breathing and mm -hmm. slow your breathing down, for mm -hmm. example. Which isn't a cure for panic, but it is a way that people can learn that short-term control. To cope with it. To yeah. cope with it, yeah. yeah. So four Ds is a way of bringing both the short and the long-term ways of getting back control under the same um, rubric, the same umbrella. Mm -hmm. So we have distract, dilute, develop, and discover. So distract is really just drawn from what people do in their everyday life. Like mm -hmm. you said, reading, yep. taking a bath, going for a walk in nature. Yep. It's ways just to get out of the situation that can just often you know, take your mind completely off the thing that you're, you're stressed about. It's, it, might have, it might also sometimes lead to other ways around, you might meet new people on the green net, for, mm -hmm. for example. Yep. Um, but sometimes distractions can also be a problem. So if people only use exercise to distract, yeah. they might they might exercise too much and mm -hmm. you know get injuries, for example. Mm -hmm. So distraction has a two sides to it, but we all have different types of distraction. It's even the most kind of mentally healthy person has got lots of really nice distractions in their life, but they yeah. just balance them in a way that works. Yeah. Dilute is the kind of training approaches that are out there: slow mm -hmm. breathing, applied relaxation. Uh, grounding as well, you know, like stress balls. Yep. Um, we see those as methods that people can get a bit more, get more control over a, of a distressing state. Mm -hmm. Take the edge of it, think a bit more clearly in the moment. Mm -hmm. Develop is where it's a reminder of the person to take back control of yep. their dealing with distress. One simple approach is worry time. So remember, I said that it's useful to have some time in your day just to kind of go through your problems. Yep. It seems to work if people can plan that, that they have a certain time where they know they're not gonna be disturbed and they mm. can just worry or just think or write or talk about their problems. Do they have to worry? Don't have to, <laughs> no, but they have to not do some task. Yeah, okay. Just let their mind wander or write or yeah. contemplate what, what's, what's bothered them today, yeah. kind of thing, yeah. Um, there are other things under develop, like uh, reminding yourself of your strengths and resources. You know, How did I cope last time something difficult like this People might even have a list of things. Like, oh yeah, I did this, or I talked to this person, yeah. or I got this result. And then finally, discover is very much like what Milo does. That's about asking yourself questions, going deeper, mm -hmm. getting to the bottom of it. It could be going to see a counsellor or a therapist, but it might sometimes be about talking to a friend who you know is going to listen mm -hmm. non-judgmentally for long enough yeah. for you to kind of get to a point where you've, you've got a different view of it you've, you've got something from it mm -hmm. that's that's um in the in the long term going to help you because you've seen the picture from a new pers the problem from a new perspective yep and so it's really and sometimes that does involve bringing up certain feelings to the surface and that's why people need to be in control of when they do it and who they do it with yep and four d's is about uh, delivering those that those constructs in a we do like a 90 minute session online where everyone does it and there's hundreds of people online doing it mm. and we're all sharing our experiences on the chat um, and we've done it to thousands of people now in the UK really? started in COVID and we wanted to to find a way to bring that and evaluate it over okay. here in, in WA so you're in the, in the process of doing it at the moment yeah just finding partnerships of, of who would work with us on that yeah, yeah. yeah. something I'll be interested in great awesome yeah. all right Warren we'll Thank you so much for covering that. Was a lot, we discussed a lot, we covered a lot. Um, I really appreciate you taking the time to speak with me today. Again, Derek Best, Speak and Fight for Life. Take the time to smile today. Thanks for listening.